I got to experience Drift Week 5, a two week long excursion, journey, adventure, whatever you want to call it, where we get to street drive our drift cars all over a certain part of the country. So I was driving my supercharged beams AE86 Hachiroku. This trip is awesome because there's social media influencers, there's professional drifters, there's grassroots heroes, and then there's like Corolla nerds like me. I put a post up a little while back and asked my friends and followers what questions they had about Drift Week. And one of my friends put up, uh, what were some of the most memorable moments? We want to see some emotion. So in this video, we'll talk about the highest of highs and the lowest of lows from my experience at Drift Week 5. We're going to start at the lowest of lows and work our way up from there because I want to end this video on a high note and ending on the lowest of low just makes everything depressing. So we'll start with the worst thing that happened to me on Drift Week. On day two of Drift Week, I arrived at the Adam LZ Drift Party at English Town having a good time driving the FD track. And then at the end of the day or close to the day, I crashed and it was bad. This was the absolute worst moment of the entire trip for me. It, it wasn't my fault, right? It was the other driver, it was his fault, and I wish I had good video of it because I wanted, it would have been great to show it, but I've only gotten one clip sent to me of what happened and it was all blurry and out of focus and slow motion and whatever. Uh, I, turned, I turned on my GoPro on my helmet and it beeped on, went beep beep, and then turned off. So I ran out of battery, didn't get on the helmet cam, but, but, but here's what happened is, the Adam Elsley Drift Party, we're all trying to put on a big show for people, have these big tandem trains and things like that. And the guy who's running grid, you know, said, hey, three people. You know, I hadn't driven with the guy in front of me. I said, no, 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 come back and talk to me. And he said, no, the guy in front said all three of you should go. I was trying to show my friend the course layout. He had just gone there, hadn't driven a single lap, and he was chasing me. We we're going to do the course. I said, all right, well, if it feels confident, you know, that's fine. This is Drift Week. Uh, turns out he was not confident, and he wanted to drive by himself or with his friend that was next to him but they sent us and he spun, didn't realize I was there because he thought he was driving solo and uh, ripped off the front end of my car, right? This was terrible. I had just done some body work. I had just repaint, I had just painted my fender flares. I had just trimmed my fenders for the flares and it was, it was a bummer. The headlights are trashed, the bumper is trashed. One of my fenders is ripped in half. Uh, one of my fender flares was was cracked and and the paint was coming apart and uh and it just sucked crashing happens in drifting this isn't the first time i've crashed that's not what upset me i think what upset me was that this was day two of this huge trip and here i was crashing into somebody it made me feel like i didn't belong to be a part of drift week and it was it was so bad that i even like after the crash happened my car still drove just fine. It was all cosmetic damage. I drove over to my trailer and I parked my car staring at my trailer because the first track, right? I had the truck and trailer there. Um, I parked it and I stared at the trailer and, and thought, I mean, probably for 15 minutes, I debated with myself if I was going to load up and go home. I was that upset about it. And it's not like I was upset at anybody else. I was just so upset that it happened and it really killed my confidence for the entire rest of Drift Week. It, was, it still gets me, you know, talking about it because I was... I was really, really that upset about it. I actually have like social anxiety or I get social anxiety. And so like something like this happened was really, really rough, especially like, like the Adam Elzer drift, drift Day. I'm trying to put on the show, trying to show eight, six is still cool. There's like 7,000 spectators there. I had a bunch of people want to go for rides and this, this happened. It was, 
it was terrible. But one of the good things that came out of it is it re resulted in a much better friendship with, uh, with you know, somebody I met through drifting. His name is Devin Bruce. He's the one who's showing the track layout. And he and I became really good friends out of this. At least I feel like we're good friends. Because after it happened, they came over to check on me. He and his, his girlfriend, his girlfriend was, was riding with him for the trip. And they both were like, 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 you can't let this get you down. It's drifting, you know? So it was cool because they kind of, they pushed me to stay and not let me go home. And the next day we stopped, picked up supplies, and we fixed the car. Okay, next next low point. Um, well, I guess another thing that, that sucked about that is I couldn't drive the whole next day because I was working on the car. And the next low point, I think this was just hit me hard because I was really loving the track, was I, I ripped my oil pan open on Shenandoah Circuit at, at Summit Point. That track was so cool because it had like a Mahon entry and it had like the um, carousel from the Nürburgring, and then it also had a section out of the carousel that reminded me of like uh, Sportsland Yamanashi. It had these like downhill kind of off camber, like quick back to back turns, and it was just awesome, my 8.6. And then I ripped my oil pan open, and it ended the day way early. I missed out on a couple hours of driving because I was pulling my oil pan off and fixing it. It really bummed me out. And I think the last low point I want to point out here is when we were drifting at Pocono and I was finally starting to get a hang of it, I was like trying to chuck backies and just messing around because nobody's behind me. And uh, I messed up. I, I went to, I was in third gear. I was trying to huck it and downshift and throttle back on because I was throwing so much angle. And Brandon Wicknick had, had done like a whole lap chasing get up back up with me. And Wicknick's a friend of mine. And uh, I messed up and I panicked and I hit the brakes because I didn't want to go off into the snow and the dirt and everything. didn't want to big, dig big old ruts. And Wicknick had just caught up to me at this point. So as I hit the brakes to straighten out and not go off track, he just bumps me and, and cracked my taillight. And I was like, oh, no. It kind of sucked, right? But it wasn't, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, right? Uh, I've got another taillight. It's sitting over there. And, you know, Wicknick's a friend of mine. His car wasn't too bad. So everything's okay. Nobody's, nobody's upset. And it was totally fine. But it still was a bummer because I was like, it's the first time I, feel, I think Wicknick had chased me. And then this happens. I screw it up. But moving on to the better memories. I got to tandem with Brandon Wicknick. He's somebody I looked up to for a long time. When I first started drifting, I bought a bunch of parts from him, right? I bought a GTS swap for my A86 from him out of a storage unit that when we got there, he said, oh yeah, I think the people think I'm running a chop shop here because he, <laughs> he was selling parted out cars and stuff out of the storage unit. And of course we go there at night and to make things even funnier is be like loading the car up. So I didn't have a truck. So I bought this, this, this 4AGE uh, engine and transmission, this whole GTS swap from him, and I had a Subaru wagon. And so it was me, Wicknick, uh, one of my roommates, I can't remember if it was one or two of my roommates, and then uh, Jose, who used to be Wicknick's like, crew chief in Formula Drift, uh, this, this Portuguese guy, I love Jose. And uh, as we were loading it up, like, we're like, well, like, how are we gonna get this in here? Because they expect me to bring a truck, and I didn't bring a truck, and Jose just like climbs things, it's okay, let's go, and he just like, picks up and like lifts and like drags like the whole thing into the car as the other three of us are on the other end like picking up the engine. He's got the tail shaft of the transmission I think it just, 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 I mean just beast hulk the thing into the back of the car. I got the tandem again with, with Wicknick and it was awesome because you know we were at the, <laughs> we were on the FD track at English Town and I was kind of struggling in a couple of spots to, to like keep up because my car wanted, I was really gripped up so my car wanted to bog out and I'm like clutch kicking and I clutch kick right as Wicknick handbrake drags and I just like I almost yeeted right into him because I was accelerating as he's decelerating and I was talking to him after and he was like he was like oh he's like Devin I was sitting there I was like oh cool look at that Devin's getting right up on me yeah and I was I'm like yeah that's what it was it totally wasn't me just about to crash into you you know <laughs> another kind of weird high point for me was was when it started snowing on our way to Pocono uh, Adam LZ needed some anti-fog stuff for his S15. And I had some because I brought it with me because I don't have, you know, heat or air conditioning the 8.6. So yeah, you can borrow it, no problem. I was all excited, like, look at me, helping Adam LZ out, you know, like, woo. And then, uh, and then it didn't work well. Because <laughs> I think that it, we, I think he had to clean the windshield first then put the anti-fog stuff on and I didn't think about that. Um, and I think that's why it didn't work, but I felt really bad because like in, there's a group chat and he like asked again later, was like, does anybody have any anti-fog stuff that actually works? And I'm like, oh, but it was cool because I felt like I was helping him, you know? Another, another super memorable moment for me, I'm, I'm always going to remember this. Uh, so end of day one at, at Summit Point, and this is when I ripped a hole in my oil pan, I'd patched it, put, well, 
I made Devin Bruce weld it because I wasn't feeling super confident in my weld. So he welded it for me and we, we, we had to flat tow my car over to the other track uh, because the the gasket sealer hadn't hadn't cured yet so we like flat towed my car with his car over to the other track and we all pushed the like everybody parked in a line for like a sweet picture and we had to push my car into the, into the spot because I didn't want to start the engine and, and cause the the oil pan gasket to leak and stuff but uh, what was super memorable is we just sat there hanging out and talking with a bunch of people um, you know, talked to Fielding Shredder, made some new friends like Tyler, who's got that super sweet J uh, one Jay-Z Cressida, you know, hung out with some of the old, you know, old buddies like Dustin Hash, but also talked to a bunch of new people. And I felt like that was a really good time to like actually, actually sit and chat and get to know everybody, which is what I really look forward to the most about Drift Week is getting to know it, uh, getting to meet new people and make new friends. I think that the, the next high point for me from there that I, this is once going to always remember this is having both Luke Fink and Fielding Shredder drive my car and get their thoughts on it. Luke Fink loved my car and I thought that was super cool. You know, he pointed out a couple of things that I, that I need to dial in a little bit better, but he gave me the opportunity to see what my car was capable of. The entire trip up until this point, my confidence was still like, like still sucked because of crashing at the Adam LZ day. I didn't feel confident tandem with people. I didn't feel confident um, in my own driving skills. I, I kept you know going over everything in my head, thinking, oh, is there something wrong with the car? Oh, do I need to change this? You know, and and it was really bothersome. And then having Luke drive my car and see what the car was capable of was was super cool, and it really boosted my confidence. Like, hey, there's nothing wrong with the car. It, you're just in your head, you need to get out of it. And that's exactly what happened. My driving changed immediately after that, and it was awesome. And then Fielding Shredder, you know, like, like I remember watching Hyperdrive and realizing this guy that's on this, this Netflix TV show is a drifter and he drifts in Texas with Lone Star and like I was like oh my gosh this is so cool and so I kind of like being able to, to talk with him you know he's a really good driver and he's a super cool dude so being able to like have him drive my car and get his thoughts on it even though he's not like an 8.6 driver it was really cool and it was, it was neat to be able to see like like some of the things he struggled with that's different about an 8.6 with other cars. Things really started to click for me at Thompson. So I have 8.6 buddies that drift at Thompson, so I knew that I know that it's a good track for 8.6s. And it took me a while to like find my groove. Like up until that point, Thompson was the last track. And Summit Point was the second to last track. And at Summit Point is when I started to find my groove again, right? I let Luke drive my car. Oh my gosh, this is what my car can do. This is awesome. So I started to, to find that confidence again. And my, my, my driving really started to get dialed in. And then at Thompson, I felt like I was killing it. And it felt so good. Like everything just clicked. I was just having such a good time. And I didn't have the stress like I had the rest of the trip. So it was, it was awesome. And I got to tandem with my friends. And I felt the confidence to get close during tandems. And, and it was super cool because I'd struggled that all week. And finally, everything was falling into place. And the trip ended. <laughs> finally, the last day, I'm doing good. Uh, but I, I, I loved it. I loved that track. Thompson was great. Like, as far as all the tracks on Drift Week, Summit Point was my favorite as far as like a solo driver, at least Shenandoah anyway. I didn't feel like I needed a tandem to have a good time. Of course, tandem is always more fun, but the track itself was super entertaining. But Thompson was such an awesome tandem track, especially the clubhouse circuit. That's the one that we were like the smaller circuit, not doing the big blast entry. Um, the one that we'd do two laps and then pull back off. I loved it. It was, it was awesome. And everything just seemed, like I said, everything seemed to click and I was finally driving with the homies and, and I felt like it was a, it was a good time. And I, I just, I really enjoyed that. Driving on those lower speed, kind of like, almost like go-kart feeling tracks. I mean, that's, that's probably one of my favorite things to do. And 
and being able to keep up with my, my buddies and drive with new people, because that's when I finally got tandem with, with, with other people. You know, I was tandem with Tyler and his uh, JC Crest that I use and the drift train. It was, it was a lot of fun. And it was the only time I think that people came up to me asking to tandem with me. Um, I think because they also noticed I was finally, finally getting the hang of things and not, not you know, freaking myself out. All right, the last thing, the highest of high, the things that I will remember and cherish forever. All of these things I'll remember and cherish forever. Every, even the bad memories, even the lowest of lows, I will cherish those memories forever because this is such a cool trip. Uh, but the thing that really, that made it all worth it to me, okay? It wasn't meeting all the pros or driving with these incredible people. It wasn't traveling to all these cool tracks. It wasn't, it wasn't all these other things. What it was to me was, was being invited back. I thought Drift Week was a once in a lifetime opportunity that I would never be able to afford to do this again or this is something that I would never be able to do again. But Aaron Losey invited me back and I would be. I would love to be on Drift Week 6 later this year, but unfortunately, time and budget aren't in my favor. I'm still financially recovering from Drift Week 5. <laughs> it might take me a little while to recuperate from that, uh, but Drift Week 6, I wish, I wish it was financially doable for me. It's just not, unfortunately, not in the cards for me. But I'm hoping to be back for Drift Week 7 or Drift Week 8 next year in 2023 once I get a few more things ironed out in the car and uh, once I get the funds set aside a little bit better for it. Make sure to check out the playlist here for more Drift Week content. I've got tons of videos of all the stuff that happened and I've got other things going on too. I've got a bunch of A86 build videos and other drift event videos. So make sure to check out a channel uh, for all the other cool stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Thanks everybody.